Hi, this is Ray Otter with uh, F-Stop Cam. And we're here in the backyard in my work shed. Uh, it's the middle of the night. And what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate IR or infrared um, video. Uh, you can also do photography if, have, if you have the right DSLR and you get the IR um, if you get the IR filter removed from the DSLR. It's a permanent thing, so you can't really put it back, but you got some pretty interesting things. Now I could get into the whole uh, physics of infrared and what it does. It's basically, um, I'm not going to get into a big, the whole thing about it, but just as a, as a quick, uh, it's like sound. You have frequencies, the human ear picks up certain frequencies, and um, if, if you had to listen to every hum and high frequency and radio frequency, along with audible frequencies, you wouldn't be able to hear the audible ones uh, because everything else would just be washing it out. Well, with with images or with optics, lights, you have um, frequencies that span this entire range and red is a very low where you get the blues that are um, at the uh, upper part, portion of that. Um, in fact, that's why when you do um, darkroom uh, developing, you use a red light because the red light actually this fan might be distracting. You use a red light because the red light's at a low frequency and it doesn't um, get it, it doesn't burn onto the paper as well because of that lower frequency is a long frequency. Now, when the camera makers create their cameras and their sensors, those sensors are picking up all the light, and part of that light is this very long red frequency and it can cause uh, colors to be off and things not to look right to our human eyes. So what they do is, instead of pro doing it in processor in the camera, they add an infrared blocker to the sensor to block out that uh, certain bandwidth, that frequency of red light that would otherwise uh, cause the tones to be a little bit different. If you look at a, light, a camera without the infrared, <clears throat> you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, today we're going to use uh, two of my action cams. This is the uh, Midland XTC 300. It's a high definition camera. I believe it does 1080. And uh, this has the regular uh, lens in it with the filter block, the IR filter. This is the Sony Action Cam. I actually really like this. It's very similar to the GoPro. In fact, I believe the sensors are actually the same between the Hero 3 and the uh, Sony Action Cam. Um, actually, I think Sony makes the, the, uh, the uh, sensor for the uh, GoPro. Uh, I just went with this because I like to be a little bit different. Everybody has a GoPro. Alright, so this is a Sony action cam. This is the Midland XTC. I had taken the lens out of the Sony ac action cam and removed the IR filter. So we should get an IR um, uh, image with the Sony and a regular image at the XTC. So to demonstrate how the IR is going to work, I have also have an L IR an infrared light here. It's an LED light and you can't see it uh, with the naked eye when it's on. Um, so we're going to use that and then also this is a regular red light and I'm going to show you how with the IR how a red light becomes just a regular light uh, once you have that image on. So what we have is we have this infrared LED uh, light and I'm going to plug this in and you really shouldn't see much some cameras are more sensitive than others um, and the sensor will pick up some kind of light from it. Some cameras will totally flush it out because of the IR filter covering the, uh, the sensor. So let's plug this in and see if we see anything. I'm not even sure how sensitive the uh, uh, camera that we're filming with this. I'm actually doing this with the Lumix uh, Panasonic FC200. Uh, um, Alright, so I don't know. There might be, it might look a little blue and that's the uh, that's the infrared LEDs on now. If I turn it off, you probably see it go back to regular. I'll turn it on. In fact, I'll I'll set it up here and turn the lights off so we can see if uh, if it's enough to reflect off of anything. Although this camera should not be picking up too much. Yeah, that didn't look like it's uh, there's anything. So let's point it right at the camera and see. And you can see it's really not. All right, so maybe you see that little blue, but it's definitely not bright by any uh, by any means. So we're going to switch over the cameras now to the two action cams, so you can see the difference. Five, four, three. So now we have both of the action cameras set up, and we're going to see uh, 
So the idea is to put them side by side when I'm editing the video. But let's see what um, what we get when we turn on the infrared. So you can see in one cam it's probably a lot lighter or brighter than it is on the other. The Sony does not have the infrared glass in there anymore, taking it out. And so you're going to see the infrared a lot more than on the um, XTC, which had the infrared removed. So let's uh, turn the lights out and see what, uh, what we see now. So it's completely dark from what I'm looking at. And I'm going to shine a light around and see if uh, we can illuminate other things. And you should be seeing things lit up by the Sony because the Sony doesn't have the infrared anymore so we'll, we'll look at a few different things around and uh, we'll compare the two cameras side by side the two Sony or the two action cams side by side the one with the infrared removed and the one without it removed so we're out here right outside the uh, door of my shed with some of the light I don't even know if you can see me with the action cams uh, the point of view cams uh, you might actually be able to see me a little bit more with the Sony without the infrared just because the, it's going to capture a little bit more light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the infrared light and shine it around and show you that the one camera is going to see the light and the other one's not going to see it. And now the light's on. You should be seeing some kind of uh, light off of the Sony there. And you probably don't see anything with the XTC act action cam. But um, just another demonstration of uh, using infrared light. And again, this is an infrared, specifically infrared LED uh, light. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to use a regular incandescent or uh, it's a fluorescent light. No, it's an incandescent light. And we're going to change it out and put an incandescent red bulb in to show you the difference with the light. 